Lady Gaga. Around for our in-depth interview with Wade Fenn, CEO and founder of Minnetonka-based Navel. Thanks for watching Tech.MNTV. Guest today for the Go Kart Labs primary interview is Wade Fenn. Wade is CEO and founder of Minnetonka-based Navo. Welcome, Wade. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Good I'm to be very here. Excited to hear more about Navo and, and the product that you've got today is Voco, mm -hmm. and kind of uh, introduce our audience to what is Navo and, and what is Voco and what it is that you're working on. Navo is the company name, and Voco is our product that we are just launching globally at this point. And uh, Navo is kind of the brainchild of mine from 10 years ago, solving a problem of uh, the interfaces that people have in their home to their music or to their other devices. Um, in many cases, there's too many remotes with too many buttons. We utilize voice as a centerpiece of our device. And what our first product does is it takes media from all of your different sources, from your PC, from your smartphone, from the cloud, from a Mac, from a iPod that you would plug in from a hard drive and brings them all together on a singular interface and allows you to query them using voice to get to your content quickly and then distribute them to multiple zones throughout your home. Is this a consumer facing product? Is this, is this a B2B product or how do you anticipate introducing this to the market? Well we're definitely introducing a consumer facing product under the Voco brand name but uh, coming out of the consumer electronics show we were actually approached by a number of manufacturers who were also interested in licensing our interface or our technology or our board to essentially put together uh, other branded uh, solutions that would probably cover price points that Voco would choose not to uh, play in. Mm -hmm. So I see both here. And uh, let's break down and dissect the technology a little bit. You've mm -hmm. got the device, yep. which we're going to take a look at and talk more about here in a minute. Mm -hmm. You have the mobile and the voice activated uh, application, and then you actually have the interface and then the software that pulls this together, I'd imagine. Essentially, there's three components. There's, the, uh, there's an Android or iOS application that goes on your smartphone or tablet. There is firmware that goes onto the uh, hardware device, and then there's the hardware device itself. And in some cases, you're plugging uh, a V-Zone, for example, into an already existing stereo. In other cases, uh, in the kitchen or the bedroom, you don't have a stereo. You want a powered speaker version of that. We call that the V-Spot. And uh, products that are kind of on our future roadmap is a product called the V-Bar that would actually be an audio and video streaming device that would clip onto the bottom of your TV and essentially be a sound bar with video capability. Um, so what we do is we stream using your existing Wi-Fi network in the home and all of these uh, devices essentially connect together on your Wi-Fi network and allow you to distribute audio or video mm -hmm. in multiple locations in the home. And the key to this is that it's all voice controlled? Well, voice gets you to your content quickly. So if I said, you know, play Can't Get No Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones, you would probably go into a menu and do, do a little scrolling on your iPod, and the typical person it would take about 30 seconds to get to. We would take about three seconds to get to that. Mm -hmm. Now imagine you're in, in the video realm, and you said uh, you wanted to get to all the Academy Award winners of 1985, or you wanted to see all of your Tom Cruise movies. Okay, You would be clicking and scrolling for a long time, or you'd need a keyboard, where in our case, you would just ask for it, and it would come up within a couple seconds on your TV screen. So voice, really customers want to use voice for purposes of getting to their content quickly. They don't want to voice enable everything. So we're clearly a voice and touch combined uh, interface. Mm -hmm. For example, when we did focus groups and studied this, customers don't want to talk to their phone and go volume up or talk to their remote control. They want to actually just use the volume control button to do that because it doesn't uh, make it any faster to use voice in that situation. We use a combination of voice and touch because it gets the customer what they want quickly and that they still have the control that they want using touch. So how long have you been working on this? Well, we founded the company in 2004, um, and then we spent probably a good two years just studying the market. We did a number of focus groups around the country. We talked to a lot of different suppliers. 
we actually started building product in 2006 before smartphones had really proliferated. So our first uh, venture was PC-based. We used the PC to process voice, and we had to create our own uh, internet-connected device with a screen and Wi-Fi connected. We abandoned that two years later in large part because smartphones began to proliferate, which had great touch screens and had Wi-Fi capability and had the screen on it. So uh, the other big change is that voice processing moved from the PC into the, into the cloud. So now you can take your, app, your VOCO application anywhere and use voice on a 3G or 4G network. You don't have to be tethered to your PC or tethered to home. Mm -hmm. and, and how does VOCO and the other um, brands that you mentioned, the, the V-Spot? The V-Spot or V-Bar. Yeah. How, do how does that compare and, and intersect with what's happening right now, the, the rapidly changing landscape? Of course, what's already exists like a, like a Sonos or a Boxy mm -hmm. kind of solution. And yep. then how does that intersect with like Apple and Google TV? Where do you see this all coming together and how do you fit in? Well, Apple and Android are both pursuing their own kind of walled garden solutions that you you know you can do an Apple only solution or you can do an Android only solution. We make things work with both. Mm -hmm. uh, we think consumers want choice. We think consumers don't want to be locked into one content solution only. So our device works on Apple and on Android. Mm -hmm. um, Unlike Sonos, we do audio and video. Mm -hmm. So there, are, Sonos has done a good job of ha kind of paving the path for multi-room audio distribution. Mm -hmm. Our board supports both audio and video. So, and and we use voice as a centerpiece of our interface to kind of get rid of the old traditional menu-driven. Uh, mechanisms to get to your content. And it's all about speed, right? It's all about ease and speed. Um, you know, we, it's particularly in the female demographic, you know, they, they are very accustomed to using smartphones, but they don't really like their remote controls. Mm -hmm. So our product really fits well with uh, kind of the up and coming generation of smartphone users and tablet users who are accustomed to getting things quickly, but you know, don't have the solutions in the home right now. And, and eventually, I think the consumer won't want to have five, ten different ways to get to their content throughout the home. And I believe that the, you know, the, the smartphones, whether it's Android or iOS, will, will be the dominant interfaces in the home within the next few years. Interesting. And uh, I know you talked about CES earlier, mm -hmm. which is really kind of when you came out, and I know you were talking yeah. about how you were in Amsterdam last week, and yeah. I know you've got some stuff going on, and maybe was it Australia you've t mentioned before? Well, we, uh, ISC, which is the, uh, it's kind of the CEDIA conference for Europe, if you will. It's the up, upper end custom uh, electronics uh, uh, show in Europe. Um, we have a number of countries that are interested in launching with our products. Uh, we had talks with Canada there. We had talks with the Netherlands, Sweden, uh, Dubai, India, Russia, uh -huh. uh, and, and Australia is our first uh, market that will launch our product. Um, we have conversations going on in the U.S., and we have some U.S. distribution as well. Um, but candidly, uh, multi-room audio is taking off elsewhere wow. uh, even faster than in the U.S. So. Interesting. Why is that? I think it's probably the nature of how uh, products are distributed in these markets. They're probably more small and mom-and-pop retailers who are interested in new products and are uh, bringing those new products to marketplace uh, uh, in Europe and uh, elsewhere. And uh, here, I think, Retailers tend to want to wait until everything's baked, and yeah. uh, uh, particularly, I think some of them are waiting for the Apple app to be done. And we're probably 60 days away from launching that Apple app. And the V Spot, candidly, is is really the centerpiece product of ours. So I think that and the Apple app are really the trigger points for a lot of uh, U.S. retail launching. Wow! And how many employees or how many people are on the team right now? We hire, we probably have 15 to 20 people working on this project at any time. We have a team of about seven employees here in Minneapolis. We have four employees in Costa Rica working on this. We have a few people in Seattle work on this. And then we have some outside contractors that 
might do uh, graphic design or some of our marketing work, mm -hmm. PR work, that sort of thing. And I have to ask, how have you funded this so far? Most of it has been funded by me. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've probably taken in $3 million in funding uh, outside of my family, and the rest of it has come from uh, the FENS. Sure. So. This is a pretty big swing. What would you say the ultimate vision is? The ultimate vision is a voice touch interface uh, to connected, using connected devices that would connect your TV, would connect your audio in your home, and would be usable outside. Uh, and uh, so to an extent, Siri has already started to do some of that. I think the main difference of what we are looking at is very application specific uh, functionality that will get things done and won't lock you into just an Apple solution. We're an Apple and Android solution. Maybe we'll be a Windows mobile solution someday, too. Mm -hmm. Sure. And um, what phase would you say you're in right now, and, and what's the next step? I'd say we're in the launch phase. Yeah. Um, it's all around uh, finishing up this uh, final product. We have uh, 40 of these V-spots that are ready to be shipped to people for testing, and then we go into mass production on that, that uh, product. And V-Zone and the V-Zone Plus are built and ready to be shipped. Mm -hmm. What does that ramp up look like? May is the most likely time frame where we get our first initial you know, production uh, models shipped of the V-Spot, and I think at that point in time, you know, we, we begin building inventory and getting ready for the fall. Uh -huh. um, what's been great is that we have other people interested in working with us uh, to help us ramp that manufacturing, and uh, our manufacturer in particular is very interested in our product, and it's won a lot of accolades. They've even approached us and said, uh, let us distribute it in China. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, that's exciting for us. Yeah, certainly here. Global reach coming out of Minnetonka, that's fantastic. What would you say the biggest question mark is? Well, I think the biggest question mark is, you know, uh, certainly Google and Apple have a lot of money they're throwing at this space. And uh, how are they going to play up against, how are we going to play up against these kinds of solutions? Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of that depends on um, how the retailers approach it and how the manufacturers approach it. Right now, the manufacturers are being squeezed by these forces, so they're coming to us and looking for solutions that may work better with consumers. Um, but a lot of, if you've been following what's going on with U.S. retail, U.S. retail is not doing particularly well in electronics these days. In large part, it's because Apple is taking a bigger and bigger share of the pie. And it's not just the hardware part of the pie, it's the content part of the pie, it's the application part of the pie. And unless the retailers kind of break out of that mold of, call it taking the candy from Apple alone, you're, you're going to find that, the, that their value proposition continues to decline. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, I think uh, our, our fate somewhat rests in the hands of, uh, of those who we think are going to follow a consumer-based uh, a consumer-based solution as opposed to a singular supplier-based solution. Um, but we work with Apple. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we'll work on an app, w Apple tablets, on, an, on Apple smartphones. I own, a, I own an Apple phone and, and I enjoy certain parts of it. Um, but if I ask it for Guns and Roses, it, it'll show me flower shops, mm -hmm. um, you know, where we'll retrieve Guns and Roses and play it in multiple places in your home. Absolutely. Wow. Lots going on there. It's so fascinating to hear about, you know, something like this that has potential global reach right out of Minnetonka. And it's kind of an untold story. There hasn't been much about you guys out there in the press yet. I know you launched at CES, but other than that, I haven't seen anything. We've else. actually wanted to fly under the radar until we were ready because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ideas get stolen quickly. We kept things uh, ex essentially pretty quiet until we were ready to start our no, product right. launch. So. Sure. Wade, I want to thank you for sharing your story. It's great to see such ambitious technology uh, with potential global application reach here coming right out of Minnetonka. Thanks so much for being here. Just heard from Wade Fenn, CEO and founder of Minnetonka-based Navo for the Go-Kart Labs interview.